This is Brian Coffrin, a.k.a. Justin Carter of GangstalkerWars.com. I'm a former security specialist for security industry specialists in Seattle, Washington. We had a contract with the Amazon Corporation, and it was on Amazon property where a massive social engineering program is taking place. It is a cover for a highly classified research and development program that tests technologies such as voice to skull, emotional manipulation, and total individual control technology. If you haven't done so already, please listen to my first podcast titled Security Industry Specialist Tells All. I just wanted to take a moment to thank everybody who has reached out to me for your support. It has been overwhelming, and I am truly humbled and grateful for the response I've received from everyone. You're wonderful people, and those who are targeted individuals, I pray for you every single day, and you are the reason why I'm, why I'm speaking out. This program has to be brought to an end, and it has to be done by insiders because it is protected by veils of secrecy that are impenetrable to the average American citizen. It is only people with security clearances, people within the military and the intelligence agencies of our country that are going to have the opportunity to stop this program. We need more insiders to speak out. That is the only way we are going to make progress against what has become a nationwide problem. If people within the military and intelligence services of this country do not put an end to this, then we have no choice but to take it to Congress. Contact your congressmen, contact your senators, organize at the community level, and do whatever you can to bring attention to this issue. This will create in the general public an awareness of the topic that includes voice to skull, gang stalking, organized stalking, and what I am trying to reveal is social engineering. This will hopefully give people within the classified sectors of the military and intelligence services of this country and those who are involved in the research and development phase, the manufacturing phase, and the implementation phase of new technologies that are brought to market for military intelligence purposes and then ultimately for consumers in the general public that are part of private corporate corporations to speak out on this. It is a highly illegal program. It is being abused by people who have no regard for the welfare of those people who are being experimented upon by technology such as voice to skull, emotion manipulation, and total individual control technology. These people are looked at as lab rats and test subjects. And as a result, the effects of this program on them are truly devastating. They are isolated from society. Their physical and mental health is deteriorated to a point that is beyond repair. They are damaged for life by being unlucky enough to exist on Earth at a time when the American government values scientific and technological progress over the constitutional rights of American citizens. Unfortunately, according to U.S. law, it is actually legal for the federal government of the United States of America to experiment on its own population, on the American people, so long as they do so with non-lethal weaponry. This type of, of experimentation is being carried out against the American people each and every day. There are millions of Americans across this country that are crying out for help from their neighbors, from their family, from their friends, from their co-workers, and they are met with a wall of silence and confusion as the general public is simply not educated enough on this topic to be able to offer any real help. Also, the people who are running this program are the most powerful people in this country, and therefore anyone like myself who tries to take action against them is in for the fight of their life. Progress is very difficult. These are our fellow Americans, these are our sons and daughters, our mothers and fathers, our brothers and sisters, and they need our help. We need to stop this program now, to stop their suffering, to stop the torture, and to seek damages so that they will be compensated by the federal government for what the federal government has done to them. It's part of the law that allows the federal government to experiment on the American people with non-lethal weapons 
the government is allowed to do so so long as they fairly compensate the test subjects for the damages that are inflicted during the experimentation. There is no other way to interpret this law other than that each and every targeted individual in this country is entitled to financial compensation for the damage that has been done to them by the federal government of the United States of America. It is to this end to relieve their suffering, to make sure that they are made whole for what the government has done to them, that I have decided to speak out. This program needs to be stopped, and the helpless victims need to be rescued. That is why I'm making this second podcast, to detail the names, locations, and addresses of some of the people and the sites involved in this program. It is my hope that by doing so, the American people, law enforcement, insiders within this program, and the federal government of the United States will take the initiative and visit these locations. These are going to be addresses that you can walk up to the front door, ring the bell, and ask, why in the hell are you people torturing and experimenting on my fellow Americans? Everybody I'm about to name and all of the addresses I'm about to give you and all the businesses that I'm about to name, I have direct knowledge of, I know personally, I have been to, and I have experienced their reaction to inquiries along these lines. As long as you were playing along as part of the program, as I did, unfortunately, as a security specialist, then you are in. You are accepted as one of their own, and there is a very jovial and sophomoric and very immature attitude in regards to the program that's being run. There is no sympathy whatsoever for the victims. They're looked at as cattle. They're looked at as lab rats. And there is a total attitude of invincibility by the participants in this program. They fear no detection. They have no worry at all that someone will come knocking on that door one day with a warrant for their arrest. And when you get the wrong kind of people operating in a context such as that, then the potential exists. And in fact, um, the reality exists, unfortunately, today that they will abuse their positions of power. And they are doing so by experimenting on innocent men, women, and children all across America. If you have not done so, please listen to the first podcast I uploaded titled Security Industry Specialist Tells All. Also, you can visit my website for more information, gangstalkerwars.com. Uh, there you will find a blog titled 157 Roy Street as a location of one of the homeless shelters where this despicable program is being carried out. A program that exists in several cities around the country. And please feel free to take this information and spread it far and wide across the internet. Give it to your neighbors, tell your friends and family about it. And contact your senators, your congressmen, and demand action. Demand that it stops now. Because since I have decided to speak out publicly about this, the people I used to work, work for is now have now turned this terrible program against me, and I am now a target of it. As a result, I have a very deep, and personal understanding of what targeted individuals are going through all across this country. It needs to stop. They need to stop being tortured. They need to stop being experimented on by the government, by the people in government who are charged with their safekeeping. It is our law enforcement officers our military and our intelligence agencies. It is the fine men and women who serve in the armed forces. It is your responsibility to protect these people. You took an oath. Unfortunately, what's happening in America today is all of the people who have been charged with our protection have fallen asleep at the wheel. They have failed to live up to their oath. And either through complicity or complacency, they are either making or allowing this nightmare to occur on American soil. All it takes for evil to prosper is for good people to do nothing. 
And that is exactly what's happening today. As people who are crying out to family members and friends, to local law enforcement and the FBI, to their government, their military, to the private corporations who are involved in this for help, are being met with silence, or even worse, ridicule. They are being accused of being crazy. They're being accused of being paranoid and schizophrenic. And as I will detail in this podcast, mental health organizations are complicit in this, rendering false psychological diagnoses to completely cover up what is in fact a social engineering program and a covert research and development program for some of the most sophisticated and advanced technology that the world has ever seen. Before I name the people, places, and addresses involved in this program, I wanted to take the time to differentiate between the social engineering program that I am describing and have direct knowledge of as a result of my time as a security specialist and the general information that is out there currently available to the public on voice to skull and organized stalking. The social engineering program that I have direct knowledge of utilizes a technology that is far more advanced than just your basic voice to skull technology. And the applications for this technology go far beyond the targeting of simply an individual in society, as horrible and unacceptable as that is. The social engineering program that I detail was born out of a research and development context that is run by the military and intelligence services of our our country. This research and development program involves defense contractors, private corporations, the military and intelligence agencies of our country, private security contractors. And this entire program is, of course, overseen and run by the federal government of the United States of America. Within this research and development context, there's an application of voice to skull technology that is known as hive mind. It is currently many, many hundreds of years more advanced than what people are generally aware of. This hive mind application of this technology is being used in the military for things such as coordinating troop movements on the battlefield. It is a secure form of communication that is very difficult to hack when properly secured. This technology, as I've mentioned, can also be used to manipulate people's emotions and manipulate the actions of an individual. It can be used to manipulate the mind of an individual. By manipulating the mind of our troops, this technology can be used to enhance decision-making capabilities, to help our troops make faster and better decisions in the heat of battle, when lives are on the line. It can be used to increase endurance and strength, to give our troops literally superhuman strength and superhuman endurance, so that they can be alert and ready to function at optimal capacity in the toughest of conditions. This technology can also be used to read the minds of other people. The intelligence applications of this are obvious. But it can also be used to read the thoughts of your fellow soldiers so that communication can be done at the speed of thought instead of the speed of voice or sound. This can give our troops a tremendous advantage on the battlefield. In fact, when you start to understand the true implications of this technology and the applications of it in a military context... You begin to understand that what is unfolding within this research and development program is nothing less than the development of super soldiers. I think most people would agree that applications such as this within the context of our military are understandable. And most Americans would probably tolerate it. I certainly would, particularly research and development. The, one of the purposes of these programs is to make sure our enemies do not get an advantage in terms of technological capabilities. But when this sort of technology begins to spill over from research and development and military applications into the realm 
of normal society in the civilian context, then a very dangerous line has been crossed. And that is exactly what has happened in Seattle, Washington, and in the social engineering program that I am describing. When I first became aware of this social engineering program, I imagined those who are in charge of it to be people of great honor, respect, and dignity. I imagined them as old souls, people who had been through life, passed through the gates of initiation, proven themselves worthy, and thus were handed the keys to this truly miraculous and terrifying technology. I assumed that someone in the chain of command had taken the time to make sure that the people who were going to be put in charge of this technology and this program were vetted to make sure that they could handle the great responsibility that comes with being given such power. Unfortunately, as time went on and I became privy to more and more of the details of how this program is operated, I realized that this was simply not the case. No one had taken the time to make sure that these people were responsible enough to be given this great power. And indeed, the more I learn about the technology, the more I know that no one should be given the power to have access to this technology. It is too dangerous, it is too horrible, and the potential for abuse is too great. Once something like this has been let out of Pandora's box, there is no going back. And unfortunately, this technology is out and is being used all across our country against the American people. Far from being wise old souls who deserve this kind of power and responsibility and have been vetted and deemed worthy and proven that they're worthy to have this responsibility, these people are the exact opposite. In fact, they are jackasses. They are people with no dignity, no respect for their fellow human beings. They are juvenile. They are immature. And they are completely out of control. Many of them are intoxicated while at the workplace and in charge of this technology. Some of them are high. Some of them are drinking beers while they are controlling this technology and monitoring the targets, the victims of this abuse and torture. Far from a serious setting where they are showing that they are concerned for the target or the victim... There is a general jovial attitude among those in charge of this technology. They're often intoxicated, and you can imagine them as having just smoked a bowl, gotten the munchies, eating a bag of good Cheetos, and laughing at the target as they mess with them mercilessly, playing practical jokes, high school pranks, using the most sensitive, power te powerful technology in the world to make a game out of destroying people's lives all across America. It is infuriating. It is highly, highly illegal. And it must be stopped now. What these people have done is turned this technology into a video game. And that is exactly how they approach it. They approach it as though they are playing a cross between Sid Meier's civilization on their computer and Sims where they are controlling all of civilization and also controlling people on the individual level. This technology is actually being used right now, for all intents and purposes, as a multi-billion dollar dating system, a dating game, where the people in control of it are literally playing Cupid and shooting arrows at anyone in society that they want and making them fall in love with anyone else in society that they want. They are able to cause instant attraction with this technology by utilizing the emotion manipulation feature. This technology is so advanced and so sensitive that it can literally make you attracted to another human being and make another human being attracted to you. And in this way, they are playing matchmaker. They are playing Cupid and actually getting couples together and making them fall in love. They are also doing the opposite. They are also breaking couples up. 
They are breaking up families, husbands and wives. They are breaking up children from their parents. They are breaking up businesses and corporations. They are using this to manipulate society on every level for their own benefit and gain. And they are doing so with an attitude of complete immaturity and for lack of a better word, downright evil. They're looking at this as a massive game and a massive joke that they're playing on the target and the American people. And to the targeted individual who is isolated, you can understand what a nightmare this is. As the complementary program of organized stalking isolates them from everybody else in their community and they have nowhere to turn for help. It is for the victims that I am doing this. It is for the people that are alone and that are scared and that are being tortured by their government every single day that I have chosen to speak out, which is exactly why I am about to name people, places, addresses where people can go right now, knock on the door and demand answers. I'm going to name people, places and addresses where the FBI can go and knock on the door and arrest these people. And bring this program to an end. Because the people who are running this program in the military and the intelligence services of this country were charged with protecting the American people. You took an oath to serve and protect the United States of America, to uphold the Constitution. You took an oath to protect the American people and make sure nothing and no one harms them. And you have taken that trust from the American people and you have used it to destroy their lives. Before I name the people and the places involved in this program, I wanted to take the time to set the record straight and to inform people of what's been going on in my life since I decided to go public and blow the whistle on this illegal program run by the federal government of the United States of America. Since deciding to go public, I have been threatened. Um, I have become a target of gang stalking myself. I have become a target of voice to skull, emotion manipulation, total individual control technology. It has been used against me 24 hours a day, seven days a week uh, since I decided to go public. My time as a security specialist um, was spent learning the tricks of the trade. I was trained as a gang stalker. I was trained as someone who understands the protocols that are used within the private security industry to target an individual and harass them and systematically destroy their life. When, When I decided to go public, that protocol, that system of harassment was turned against me because I could not in good conscience continue to go along with it. Once the more training I got, the more I learned and I eventually learned the entire structure of this entire sick, disgusting social engineering program and research and development program uh, that involves the DOD for the development of highly classified and highly advanced technology that most people know as voice to skull. I could not, I could no longer be a part of it. I could no longer go along with it. These people are sick and the way that they treat targeted individuals is sick. And unfortunately, this is now being rolled out nationwide so that all of the American people are going to be a target of this program in one way or another. And as a result, um, I have decided to pre-record a bunch of podcasts that are currently stored on my cell phone and are stored on my Google Drive account. I've done this to protect myself. These podcasts are, a, are an explicit description of what this program is actually like and how these people actually treat the American people. It is disgusting. It is sick. It is so evil that it is beyond description. And I thought it was crucial before I went public to pre-record some live interactions with the people on the other end of the technology, uh, my former employers were using this to torture and harass me now on a daily basis. I thought it was crucial to record interactions with gang stalkers, 
and the people that are surrounding me 24 hours a day, seven days a week in an effort to destroy my life. And I did this to make a, a documentary to actually document what's going on in America today. And I did it to protect myself because I knew that once I decided to go public, uh, the most powerful people in this country were going to be pissed off at me. And they are. Since uploading my first podcast, I have been harassed nonstop. There has been a tenfold increase in the nastiness of the attitude that I'm dealing with from the people who are assigned to gang stalk me. They have also threatened my life. I am aware because they have told me exactly who it is that's going to kill me, exactly how it is that they're going to kill me, and where they are going to dump my body. As a result, I have pre-recorded this information and it is now stored on my Google Drive account. The site where they are going to dump my body, if they do indeed kill me, is located just outside Castle Rock, Colorado, off a trail where you can drive where people go camping. You walk along the river once you get to the farthest point that you can drive, park your car and walk uh, several miles to where the river turns into a lake. There's an opening and that is where uh, you will find my body if these people do in fact kill me. It's obvious that I have pissed off the wrong people. It's obvious that in this day and age, an American citizen cannot come forward to blow the whistle on a highly illegal, unconstitutional program that is being used to torture the American people each and every day. There are targeted individuals, there are homeless people, and members of the general population that are a victim of this technology, and they are unaware of it. If you are not receiving the voice-to-skull aspect of this technology, you still may be under the influence of this technology. Voice-to-skull is the most obvious part. You actually hear voices. You actually hear these people's voices as they are um, hitting you with transmissions, frequencies that manifest themselves audibly within your own mind, and so you can hear exactly what they're saying, and they'll tell you all sorts of stuff. Uh, much of it is uh, not suitable to repeat in polite company. But if you're not getting the voice to skull, they can still manipulate your emotions. They can still manipulate your health and your well-being. They can still manipulate your actions. Uh, if you're someone that's dealing with depression and, and um, swings of emotion and mood, this is exactly the kind of thing that this technology can be used for. Um, and as I detailed earlier, it's being used for, for purposes much even more despicable than that. Um, and so the victims of this program are not just targeted individuals, and it's not just the homeless population of Seattle, but it's Americans across the country. And the more I record on my phone, and the more I upload to Google Drive, and the more I upload on my podcast, the more threats I'm getting from these people. They are not happy with me. And they are surrounding me with people that I know are their gang stalkers that work for them, and these are people that have directly threatened my life in the past. In fact, just this morning, as I recorded yet another podcast that will be uploaded in the future, I was told not to reveal certain things or they would kick my ass, kill me, and dump me in a lake. This is why, before going public, I reported all of this to the FBI four times. I reported all of this to local and state police. I reported all of this to everyone and anyone I could, trying to blow the whistle on my company, on Amazon, and on the federal government of the United States of America. Unfortunately, what I was told was, not that I'm crazy and we have no idea what you're talking about, I was told by the Federal Bureau of Investigations and by the Tempe Police Department that what you are describing is a federal program. We know exactly what it is, and as a result, there is absolutely nothing we can do about it. I'm sorry, but that is unacceptable. It is your job to protect the American people. It is your job to investigate high crimes and felonies that have been committed by the people that have been entrusted with the safekeeping of this country, our Constitution, and the American people. Because I could not, in good conscience, accept that answer from the FBI, I have decided to start a podcast, and that's exactly what I'm doing. And what is to follow is a detailed description 
of names and places and addresses of people who are involved in this program, companies that are involved in this program, organizations that are involved in this program. And I am doing this so that people can literally enter it into Google Maps, get in your car and drive right to the front door, knock on the door and start asking questions and demanding answers and demanding a full and honest and open investigation of this program so that we can bring it to an end and get justice for the victims. If you are a targeted individual out there, I know how difficult your life is because I'm one too. And I want to personally apologize for the role that I played in this program as an employee of SIS, Security Industry Specialists, in Seattle, Washington. What I did and what my company is still doing, what the Amazon Corporation is doing and what everybody I'm about to name in this podcast is doing is unacceptable, it is illegal, and it must be stopped immediately. If you are undergoing torture every single day and every single night, If you are miserable because of what these people are doing to you with voice to skull technology, emotion manipulation technology, and gang stalking and organized stalking, I want you to know that you're not alone. I want you to know that there are good people within this program that are disgusted by it, that do not want to be a part of it. And there are more and more of them, like myself, that are seriously considering coming forward and blowing the whistle on this thing because it has gotten completely out of control. So hang in there. Hold on. Someone is coming to rescue you. And there are many of us out here that are fighting like hell to make sure that when that happens, it's not too late. Because contrary to popular belief, this is not a non-lethal weapon. This is not something that is just messing with people and making their lives a bit inconvenient. This is something that has serious long-term psychological effects on the target. It is something that inflicts serious long-term damage physically on the target. They are being bombarded 24 hours a day, seven days a week by radio frequency signals, microwave signals that literally cook their body every single day and every single night. And as a result, they are aging at an accelerated rate. Their lives are being brought, their lives are being brought to a premature end by this technology. This technology radiates the teeth right out of people's mouths. This technology deteriorates the muscles of the individual. This technology deteriorates the joints and the bones of the targeted individual. To a point where if they have been under the influence of this technology for many, many, many years, the long-term effects of it is that it will leave them completely crippled. And there are places that I am going to name in this podcast where you can go and you can see the long-term effects that this technology has on people in the homeless shelters that are located in Seattle, Washington. So if you are someone that is a part of this program and knows that every single word that I am saying is absolutely true, please get off your ass and do something about it. Stop going along with it. Speak out. Blow the whistle. Go to the authorities. Report it to everybody that you possibly can. Go to Congress. Go to your congressmen. Go to your senators. Go to your local law enforcement. Go to your neighbors, go to your family, go to your friends. Spread the word of this far and wide. So that we can relieve the suffering of these innocent victims, get them justice and get them compensation for the damages that have been inflicted upon them by this illegal experimental program. I also wanted to take the time to say before I name specifics that there's an aspect of this technology that allows the people who are using it to see through the eyes of the target and to hear through the ears of the target. This has applications that are obvious in terms of military and intelligence applications. Because of this, I know that the people who have turned this technology against me, they have a record 
of every single thing I have done and every single thing that I have said, every single thing that I have heard, and everything else, every single thing that I have seen during the time that they have been targeting me. During this time, I have had up-close personal interactions with people who are part of this program. People who are responsible for gang-stalking innocent Americans. People who are responsible for utilizing this technology against targeted individuals. I have names. I have places. I have faces, descriptions, teeth, tattoos, moles, markings on these individuals that can identify them and help bring them to justice. If anyone wants to confirm my story high up in military and intelligence within the federal government of the United States of America, there is a computer somewhere that these people have been downloading my life onto. It exists. And all you have to do is find that computer file and you will see that everything I'm saying is true. There is also mountains of corroborating evidence that I am about to detail in this podcast and I will continue to detail until someone takes action and shuts this program down. The aspect of this technology that can see through the eyes of the target and hear through the ears of the target is one of the main features of the technology that the people involved in the research and development program are interested in. It is also exactly what's going to get them caught and exactly what's going to get this program shut down. All it takes is one good person in a position of power to demand access to these files because there are files not only on everything I've seen and I've heard, but there's files on everything that every targeted individual has seen and heard since the time they've been a target. This technology is also used on the gang stalkers themselves, on people who are co-conspirators and complicit in the crimes committed by this program. As a result, well, the reason that they use this technology on the gang stalkers themselves is to assist them in carrying out their duties of gang stalking targeted individuals. It is used to make sure that they say the right thing. It is used to make sure that they do not sympathize and empathize with the target because an aspect of the technology can be used to completely control the emotions of the gang stalker and steady their nerves and make sure that they can operate as a cool, cold-hearted, mercenary assassin. And this is the ex- exactly the, de- the demeanor that they rock when they are messing with people like me. Because of this, I know that they are under the influence of this technology and is being used to assist them in this case, as opposed to the way it's used against targeted individuals, which is to destroy their lives. Because I'm a- I am aware of the, visu- of the visual and audio aspect of this technology, I am aware that there are files on computers somewhere that have recorded everything that these gang stalkers are seeing and hearing and therefore everything that these gang stalkers are doing that is the evidence that we need to acquire in order to shut this program down because that is going to be a testimony to just how sick these people are and just what they're up to and the devastating psychological and physical effect that they are having on targeted individuals all over the country And another reason that we must make progress now is because once there is an investigation into this program, it is going to start a a chain reaction of people coming forward. More and more insiders are going to be encouraged and therefore have the courage to come forward and expose what they know about this program. So please, if anybody out there within the program knows where these files are stored, my file literally has every single aspect of this program detailed from start to finish. And I am going to now read my blog, 157 Roy Street, to begin to name the co-conspirators in this illegal social engineering and research and development program. Get those files and you will get every single person involved in this. You will get the entire program from start to finish and it will be irrefutable evidence of not only the existence of this program but just how out of control it is and the fact that it has been going on for a long, long, long time and it is time for it to be brought to an end.
All right, just bear with me. I'm trying to do this all on a cell phone, so I have to get off the recorder or go to my website. Here it is. And you can find this blog at gangstalkerwars.com, titled 157 Roy Street Connections. At the top of the article, there's a picture. You can clearly see it says 157 Roy Street. This location is in Queen Anne, Washington. And it is a converted power plant, a converted um, property that was owned by a power com company in Seattle, Washington. And it was converted to a homeless shelter uh, about two years ago. And it now ho houses about 108 homeless men, each and every one of which uh, is being experimented on with voice to skull, emotion manipulation, total individual control technology. And by the way, you can type this address into Google Maps, 157 Roy Street, Queen Anne, Washington, and you can get in your car and drive there right now and go visit this place. I would encourage you to do so. Uh, it does not open until 4 o'clock, so the homeless people do have no place to stay during the day, but right around 4 o'clock, you should be able to get in and talk to someone. And uh, as for Corey, if she's there, you can speak with her. You can also speak with Kyle, Andrew Koch or any number of other people who are there working. They rotate the employees in and out all the time, but all you gotta do is walk up to the front door and you'll see that everything I'm saying is true. 157 Roy Street Connections. During my time as a security specialist with security industry specialists in Seattle, Washington, I became aware of a massive social engineering program run by the federal government, intelligence agencies, private corporations, private security contractors, and DESC, the Downtown Emergency Service Center. This social engineering program experiments on the homeless population and the general population of Seattle, utilizing what most people know as voice-to-skull technology. However, this technology is infinitely more advanced than most people know. It can be used to completely control the thoughts and emotions of the target, and thus it can be used to control the target's actions. This program is illegal, unconstitutional, and absolutely terrifying. It must be exposed and stopped now. What follows is a detailed outline of the entire program. Please read and share with all of your friends and family. Contact your senators and members of Congress and demand that they investigate immediately. Many of the homeless test subjects of this program start out as highly educated, successful people. Their lives are systematically destroyed by this program using voice-to-skull technology, organized stalking, career sabotage, and an intense character assassination effort which isolates them from society, leaves them unemployed, and turns family and friends against them. Graystar Property Management, a company that manages apartment complexes around the country, is complicit in this illegal program. As the targeted individual is being tortured by voice to skull, microwaved and emotionally manipulated by frequency weapons, Graystar employees look the other way when the tenant complains to the leasing office. Their maintenance workers routinely enter the target's residence without permission, and they work hand in hand in organized stock in the organized stalking program to surround the target with neighbors who are working for the program. The result of these illegal activities is that the target ends up completely isolated from society and will eventually be forced out of their home. This target, this part of the social engineering program is carried out in cities across America with the goal of relocating the victim to one of the hub cities of the program, in this case, Seattle, Washington. The relocation phase of this program uses voice to skull and organized stalking to force the victim out of the city they reside in. They are then forced to buy a Greyhound bus ticket to Seattle. En route, they are intercepted by a group of thugs on the Greyhound bus that includes every other passenger on the bus. During the long hours of the ride to Seattle, the victim is drugged, robbed, tortured, and prevented from escaping. During this hellish relocation operation, False confessions are beaten out of the victim. The purpose of this is to later prevent the victim from seeking help from law enforcement, for they are told that the false confessions will be used against them if they do so. The victim's ID, credit cards, social security card, and cell phones are stolen. 
thus leaving the victim completely helpless and destitute. They are then dropped off on the side of the highway in the freezing cold and rain just outside the city of Seattle. The victim is left alone for a period of days as they wander along the highway with no money, no food, and no water. During this time, voice to skull is used to induce hallucinations and relentlessly torture the victim psychologically. When they inevitably collapse from exhaustion, dehydration, and hypothermia, they are picked up by people in the program, revived, and then dropped back off on the side of the road. Slowly, they are guided to downtown Seattle, where their nightmare will get even worse. Once the victim arrives in Seattle, they are subjected to merciless psychological torture. As they aimlessly wander the streets, organized stalkers scream insults at them and spit on them. A constant bombardment of directed frequency energy pummels the victim's mind and completely destroys their ability to function and think. This goes on for a week or more. No care is afforded to them and they are rendered emotionally and psychologically devastated. It is at this point that the victim is guided to the waiting arms of DESC, Downtown Emergency Service Center, where their torture will continue in a facility that appears to all the world as nothing more than your average homeless shelter. Located at 505 Third Avenue in Seattle, Washington, 98104, DESC Connections houses homeless men who are experimented on by a covert research and development slash social engineering program run by the United States government. Here, constantly updated versions of voice to skull and emotion manipulation technology are used against victims in a controlled setting. The shelter and surrounding area are a testing ground for a highly classified form of voice to skull known as hive mind, which is used to refine coordinated organized stalking and street theater tactics. Participation in these activities is involuntary. These helpless people are modern day slaves who have been treated like lab rats by the criminals running this program. DESC is supposed to be helping these homeless people find jobs and affordable housing. I can tell you from first-hand knowledge that although many of these victims are making a valiant effort to overcome the torture and find jobs, the employees of DESC will simply not allow it to happen. Their job is to keep these men homeless at all costs. They are human test subjects in a highly illegal program, and thus their homeless condition is understood by all involved as permanent. With such a miserable existence imposed on them by those who have been charged with their care, these homeless men have very little to look forward to. The people running the social engineering program know this, so they have built into the program a series of incentives. These range from dirt cheap cigarettes and free bus rides to EBT food stamp cards paid for by the state of Washington. But the most well-behaved of the test subjects have a chance to move uptown to a place that most homeless men in Seattle only dream of living someday, 157 Roy Street. Stay tuned for part two.